Okay, so what exactly is reverse Fibonacci? Well, all I do is I take the preceding move, in this case here, this pullback, I use that as my multiplier for the subsequent move. In other words, I'm using the most recent price action because I think the most recent price action is the most relevant price action. So in other words, say from an Elliott Wave perspective, I'm utilizing Wave 2 as my multiplier for Wave 3. I'm using my multiplier for Wave 4, to my, uh, my, the, the length of Wave 4 as my multiplier for Wave 5. So for example, on this way, uh, diagram here, I would probably say that my wave three is a 2.0 multiple of the depth of wave two. And that wave five is a 1.382 multiple of wave four. Okay, well, what about the depth of wave two and the depth, and depth of wave four? Well, those are gonna be your standard Fibonacci retracements. Uh, say, uh, uh, just to keep it simple, you know, look for 50% or the 382 or the 618, uh, because when you're really doing, say, that short-term work and that day trading on the S&P, there's not much difference or not much length or distance between a 382 retracement and a 618, so you can just round it up to be 50%. Okay, so all I'm doing, and again, I think this is a bit, there's a more logic to this, because the, the Wave 3 advance originates from the wave two decline, just as the fifth wave move up originates from the wave four pullback. So I like this approach. It's very simple. Now, this doesn't mean that we totally ignore and throw out what traditional Elioticians do. Uh, I actually combine, combine both techniques many times when I'm doing you know, real in-depth analysis of a market. But if I'm doing something fairly quick and on the fly, say from more, say from a trading perspective, and I need to be able to look at a market quickly and be able to identify, okay, hey, a likely target or a likely, say, profit taking point, then I'll simply utilize my reverse Fibonacci technique. So again, in this example, I'm using wave two as my multiplier for wave three. I'm using my, the length of wave four as my multiplier for wave five. And in the case over here, I'm using the uh, length of wave B as my multiplier for the wave C decline. So let's just, I'll just show you a few examples of this, for example, in coffee. I, like, I really like coffee, as you know, I'm bullish on coffee. I've been for a while. So for example, let's go back to say the price action uh, roughly here, okay? We have the we have the decline, we have the advance, we're going lower, we're, but how low are we going actually? And what wave to the downside are we going? Because we're going below 110. Uh, we know that, okay? That was clearly obvious. So how can we come up with an objective uh, for uh, 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 an, 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 a very nice, say a high probability target for the subsequent decline? Well, all I'm doing is I'm taking the length of this move right here, and I'm multiplying that by 1.382 and projecting it downward, okay? That will give me a very high, high probability target to shoot for as far as the subsequent decline. Now, if we want to use that, uh, that additional wave there that came in at 101.65, so we'll put a line there on the chart. Now, let's say we wanted to use um, the, that secondary swing. Okay, that's fine, that works for me. We simply go from high to low, project it downward, and you can see it's pretty much the same area. That's where we're looking for that wave, uh, that, that next wave down, okay? We're not necessarily identifying the wave as far as a C, a B, an X, or a one or a three. We're just looking for a target, okay? Well, as you can see, moving forward, that came in quite nice as far as being able to identify a high probability, say, area on the chart for us to achieve. Uh, we were looking essentially at that 101 handle, and as you can see, that's where price is essentially bottomed, okay? Now let's move on and work forward on the price chart. Okay, what about that top here? What about that high? How would I project that, okay? Would I use a 1.618 multiple of the prior swing? Well, you could. Okay, now if you do something like this, sometimes I find it valuable to take the distance between that high, that origin point, and your 1.382 level, and subdividing it into, six, into uh, the retracements, as you can see. 
So there's, and as you can see, that came in quite nicely. Or we can use the most recent swing, which would be the sell-off that we saw back in August here. So we're using the 1.618. So now we begin to identify a cluster, a cluster of resistance, resistance on where we're looking for uh, basically the market to actually travel to and then reverse from. And then what about the subsequent decline? Okay, all we're doing, take the most immediate swing, which would be this case right there. And what I'm referring to is this advance to identify a downside objective for the subsequent decline. And as you can see, again, we came in very, very close or we basically nailed the area and then that's where we've seen the subsequent rally and coffee actually develop from so rather than getting essentially say bogged down uh, I'm trying to erase that sign oh, there we go well hold on here trying to there we go so so rather than getting bogged down in the way a traditional Elliotician uh, would use uh, standard Fibonacci ratios, retracements, multipliers, and we haven't even gotten into dividers yet. Notice how nicely this approach, again, very simple approach, because I'm using simply two variables, 1.382 and 2.0. That's all I'm doing, okay? And I'm utilizing the most immediate swing or the prior relevant swing. And it did a great job of identifying support, resistance, and also sub the subsequent decline into October, November.